Okay, there's people the lags. Lags. Okay, okay I, I'm going to come up a little bit. Okay. Pitch oscillations are pretty severe. All right, so let me come into the flight controls. Just kind of watch what's happening here. I'm Jason Miller, a full-time professional flight instructor. On the Finer Points channel, you can join me as I bring you tips and tricks that I've learned from 20 years on the flight line. Southern California for a change and this morning I'm working with Rob on landings. He's just approaching his solo and we're trying to nail landing the Cessna 172. Something I've explained to Rob is that a landing, a good landing, can be broken down into five phases. That is the approach, the round out, the flare, the touchdown, and the rollout. So by breaking the landing down into those five phases you can take a more granular look at what's going well and what's not. When people have a hard touchdown, they think they dropped it in. They think it's something wrong with the flare, and sometimes it is. But nine times out of 10, it's about alignment. It's about alignment. It's about alignment. We have to work on a good visual reference point so that Rob knows when the longitudinal axis of the airplane is parallel to the runway, and hopefully lined up with and over the center line of the runway. And the last part is the rollout and fly that airplane all the way off the runway and position the flight controls for taxi for the effects of wind during taxi and fly it all the way to the tie down. Five phases to the landing will help you figure out where you're strong, where you're weak and how to nail those landings. Information Romeo 195.3 Zulu, wind 17015, gust 21. Visibility 10, ceiling 2300 overcast, temperature 162.11, altimeter 29 or 9 or 6. Alice runway 28 right, circle to land, runway 23 approaching east. Also departing runway 23. Hazardous weather for the San Diego area, available on Hiawatha. All right, power Central back a little bit. Be back, hold short instructions, advise on initial contact, you have Romeo. So one of the things that we have to figure out um, is crosswind component and a good way to do it. Oh, down by your left leg, there's an E6B in yep. that. Um, let me see if it has a crosswind component graph on it. Oh, good, it does. That's one of these. So we just want to verify that gusting 2-1 uh, from 170 on runway 23 is not exceeding the crosswind component for the airplane. Okay. So the angular difference here between 23 and 170 is, help me with math, 60 degrees. 60 degrees. Okay, yeah. so we look at this thing here. Do you see the 60 degree line? I do. And then the arcs represent the velocity, so you've got the 10 and the 20 arc. So we're, yeah, we're in yeah, here, so we're coming up to... Yeah, so you follow the 20 arc, brakes, okay, good. Follow the 20 arc to right, you're on the 60 line, out to the 20 arc right there, and go straight down for the crosswind component. See that? Okay. Um, and then across for the headwind component. So the truth of the matter is that the gust factor is close to the max demonstrated crosswind component for the airplane. All right, let's look at it again. The 60 line, right there, to the 20 arc, the and then straight down is about 17. Until two uh, we're right we're up against it. We're yeah. right up against it. And so well, I think it's a good day to go out and build a little character. I just don't want you to get frustrated with the crosswind. Okay. So admittedly, this is pretty early in the process for Rob to be dealing with these kinds of wins. Um, he's just getting very close to a solo, but I thought it was a great opportunity to show him some of the edges of the envelope. It was within my limits. Um, and you can see here, we're going back to basics. I've got the flight instruments covered. I'm having him use analog E6Bs, um, but it's probably worth mentioning that if you're a four flight user, it's pretty simple to find those crosswind components here on the airports tab by selecting runways, and then you can just see them broken down for each runway that exists. Uh, but until my students solo, I kind of want them understanding the building blocks. So that's where Rob and I are today. And uh, taxiing out to the runway, it was also a great reminder to position the flight controls for the effects of wind. And if you don't do this all the time, it's hard to remember to do it when it counts. Good. So now the wind is coming a little bit, well, I guess it's straight down the tail, if anything, over the right shoulder, right? So okay. a little bit like that. So before you know it, we're ready for takeoff. Uh, we're aligned on the runway with full aileron deflection into the wind and ready to roll. Right. Lights count. Strobes on. Wind uh, 180 at 15 gust 19 or 23. Clear for takeoff. Left close. Shock approved. All the assessment pattern. 
So if you haven't thought about it this way, a crosswind takeoff is really a crosswind landing in reverse. As we accelerate, we slowly roll the aileron out. But when it comes to the moment of liftoff, this is exactly what you want your touchdown to look like. Ailerons into the wind with the upwind wheel still touching as we lift off in a side slip. Get off the ground like that, now let it rotate around, okay? You got the airplane? Yeah, I got the airplane. All right. So as we came around here for our first landing, I must admit, uh, this was pretty sporty. You can see the crab angle that Rob's having to hold on final here. He's doing great for his level of experience. Your speed looks great, just don't uh, let that change. 18015, gust 2-2. Two, two. Nice crab angle. Everything's looking good, man. This looks great. About here, I decided this was too much wind for Rob to try to set it down, but we could do low approaches and he could get a feel for how much rudder was required to keep the airplane flying straight down the runway in a side slip. You're going to feel me on the controls in this landing because it's just too much crosswind to... Yeah, please just yep. give me a nudge where I need it. I'm... You're referencing that airspeed, right? Yep. We got a little power here, so we're going to... Here's what I'm going to show you. Watch this exercise. We're going to do a a low approach. Huh? And power for uh, 458 here, probably like a low approach this pass. Okay, Appreciate right. Bob, Roger, clear the option. Clear for the option, thanks. It's here, Bob. All right, right rudder. Line okay. us up with the runway. When the winds are strong, it's easy to feel this. Watch Rob push right rudder right about here to line up with the runway and then aileron to prevent drift. See how much rudder you've got to line up? Yeah. And see how much, and now feel the ailerons. Now just hold that. Keep flying, keep flying the line here. Okay. I got the power. Just keep your pitch down and see how you need even more rudder kind of? All yeah. right. So there's no mistaking that. It was obvious. The rudder was almost all the way to the floor just to keep the airplane flying straight down the runway. And the opposite aileron is there to prevent any drift. We go around to try it again. And in the pattern here, it's a great chance to practice ground reference. Runway 231170 at 13, gust 22, two, clear for the option. Clear for the option on runway 23 for 4580. Okay, let's get a, uh, a little bit of a crab angle into the wind here. On our next pass, we do another low approach. I'm slowly handing everything over to Rob, allowing him to use this strong crosswind to see for himself how to position the airplane over the runway when the winds are blowing sideways. Right? All right. I got power. You got rudders and aileron, okay? okay. So line us up with the runway. So use right rudder. That's two. So keep us down low. We're just keep doing a low down. approach. Okay. You let me see you use right rudder to line us up with the runway. There you go, and left hand around, like that. That's how you'd land it, just like okay. that, but you'd be flaring at the same time. Yep. See how the rudder makes you go straight? The ailerons kind of control your drift. Okay, let's go around. You've got the airplane full okay. power. Full power. Good, flaps 10. Flaps 10. And just wait for 200 uh, feet of altitude. More than 60 knots and a positive rate of climb. That was it though. You feel that? Yeah. Okay, good. And then it flaps up. Good. And then you're going transitioning to VY, which is 74. So one more time, and I think he'll have it. Are we low approach again, or what do you want to do here? Yeah, let's do one more of those. I feel like landings are going to be... Uh, dodgy. Good. More power. Let's hold this altitude. You're going to have all of it this time. A little more power to hold altitude. Fly 70. So that's going to take more power. More power. There you go, like that. Okay. Good. Rudder to line up with the center line. Aileron to stop drift. Aileron into the wind, peg that up wind wing down like that. Perfect. That's how you're going to flare it. But you just have to work on the nose as well. A little fast. Yep, so power back a little bit. Good. Rudder, rudder into the rudder into the runway. Like that. It. That's there we it. Go. That's it. Next time around was our full stop, and I was going to take this one. There's the people. Okay, I, I'm going to come up a little bit. Okay. Pitch oscillations are pretty severe. All right, so let me come into the flight controls. Just kind of watch what's happening here. If you can, ride on the flight controls here. We're going to do the same crosswing correction, okay. but you're going to, a couple things to notice. I'm also trying to protect the nose wheel, stall the wing over the center line. And then as soon as the main wheels hit, keep that upwind wing pegged down, okay? All right. All right, so we want 70 knots for the gust factor. I'm using the numbers as an aiming point, so I'll feel free to pull power to idle, but notice I keep 70, then I bring power back in, right? Power can fluctuate as long as it's maintaining a constant rate of descent and a constant airspeed. Okay, so here comes the, uh, the, the side slip. I'm using rudder to line up. 
I'm using aileron to keep the airplane over the center line, and I'm trying to protect the nose while this happens so that the upwind wing lands first, upwind wheel touches first. Okay. And then keep the crosswind sort of at bay. All right, and that completes part one of our series on mastering crosswind landings. A huge thanks to Rob for letting me publish his flight training to the internet. A big thanks to you for watching this video. Please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and hit the alert bell so you get notified of uploads and share this video with your friends. Uh, you can always find me on Instagram at Learn the Finer Points. Uh, there is an accompanying podcast for each one of these videos now. You can find at LearnTheFinerPoints.com and also on Facebook at the Finer Points page. A big thanks to the sponsors and the patrons. Without that support, these videos just wouldn't be possible. Uh, part two of this Mastering Crosswinds series is coming up next week, where you'll see Austin and I flying a local flight here at Oakland. Uh, but there is one more video coming from the Southern California trip. Um, I'm working on publishing a video every single week and a podcast every single week, uh, but we've got to get to 500 patrons first. So uh, my thanks to you for watching this video and you are the best fans on the internet. I'm Jason Miller, and until next time, be safe and fly your best.